This is Dawn Shireen from Dancing with Bipolar, and you are listening to the My Stuttering Life podcast hosted by Pedro Pena. So let's get started. What's up, guys? This is Pedro from My Stuttering Life, where you will hear the good, the bad, the very ugly. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry, but through it all, just know that you are not alone. So let's get started. This is episode number 42, and my special guest is James Hayden. James Hayden lives in the New Orleans area and works for the Oxner Health System as an HLA technologist. Outside of work, James is a writer and serves as the chapter leader for the New Orleans chapter of the National Stuttering Association. James is also the author of Dear World, I Stutter. And his work has been published by various platforms, The Mighty, Yahoo, MSN, and the British Stammering Association. James is also a New Orleans Saints fan and a Survivor superfan. I am honored to have him as a guest with me on the My Stuttering Life podcast. Welcome, James Hayden. Hello, Pedro. Thank you for having me on here. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. It it this is an honor for me. And so we have a lot of topics to cover. So let's get started. Let's do it. Do you re remember when you first began to stutter? Oh, I really don't. Like growing up, I know, I remember going to speech therapy and I remember that I talked differently than everyone else. And that's why I went to speech therapy. But I don't have like one exact moment in my life when I was like conscious enough to say, oh, this is when I began stuttering. I know the age of when I, around the age of when I began to stutter, but I don't have like one exact moment where I can define saying, oh, this is when I, I remember this, 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 this stuttering. All right, sir. Does it run in the family? Are there any others who stutter? No, I am actually the only person in my family that stutters. Okay. Now, have you ever had speech therapy? And if you did, was it helpful? I did. So uh, I had speech therapy twice in my life. Uh, So the first time I went from the ages of about five years old to 11, 12, somewhere in that ballpark, and uh, went at one point, three times a week to two different speech therapists. And, 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 and younger me really liked it because I got to, 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 to leave class. I got to talk about whatever I wanted to talk about. And I really in, in, enjoyed it in, in that aspect. Uh, but but the, the main focus of speech therapy during my elementary school days was to reduce my stutter. I was to learn uh, 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 techniques to 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 uh, prevent me from stuttering or to re- reduce reduce of my stuttering, and that ultimately did happen. Um, I stopped going to speech therapy when I was like 11, 12 years old because the stuttering, you know, went away, and I and I was you know normal and I. And I, I, I use quotes when I say the word normal. And that's kind of how it was until uh, my senior year of high school. You can tell I was a person who stuttered, nor did I consider myself a person who stuttered. And uh, stuttering came back around uh, my senior year of high school. So during my, after a lot of uh, convincing from, from my parents and, and from my family, I decided to go back to speech therapy on my junior and senior years of college, which was a big deal for me because I didn't want my friends to know I was in speech therapy because for so long I had pretended to be okay with stuttering when in fact I wasn't. I had put on this mask of being okay with it and I was afraid if people knew that there was a mask, like the world would end. So I swallowed a bunch of pride and went back to speech therapy my junior year of college. And looking back, I can say it was one of the best things I've ever done. 
because yeah, I learned I learned and relearned all techniques to reduce my stuttering, but more importantly, it paved the way for me to begin to accept the fact that I stutter and to be okay with my stutter. And it helped me learn that stuttering isn't like the worst thing in the world. It was just one of the many things that make me, me. Wow. How cool. How cool. You and I are very similar. I mean that um, I also had speech therapy when I was in college, you know, sporadically. Mm -hmm. And so there were many skills and techniques that I had learned during my grade school that I carried with me into my college years. And then also when, when I was in the U S air force, I did hypnosis and that was extremely helpful because that was the first time in my entire life where my, where my entire body was at rest. Mm -hmm. I mean, every single organ was at rest and speech wise, I could say anything. I could, I mean, it was just unbelievable what I could do. But as you know, you have to keep on with it, which I did not. And so I kind of reverted back into my old ways. So, (laughs) yeah. Talking about your high school experience, Mm -hmm. many people that I've spoken to, they would join groups to help them break out of their shell as a person who stuttered. Did you do the same? So, yes, um, I was involved in a bunch of different things in high school. But during my high school time, from about freshman year to my senior, like junior year of high school, beginning of senior year, I really didn't you know, stutter. I remember a couple of times when I stuttered, but I didn't consider myself a person who stuttered for most of my high school career. So I did, I did get, get involved in organizations, but it wasn't to like break out my shell or to hide the fact that I stutter or to be known for things. Besides my stutter, it was more of just those were organizations that uh, appealed to me and I wanted to be a part of. But in college, I think I got heavily involved in some organizations because I wanted to be known for everything but my stutter. I wanted to be known as James, who's good in academics, or James, who was involved in this organization or that organization, and not, oh, this is James, the kid that stutters. Right, right. Mm. Do you have any advice for parents and teachers? Yes. So for parents, yes, stuttering does suck. I mean, it's a fact. But it's not the worst thing in planet Earth. Like, your kid will be fine. There are groups to to support them. But my, my main thing is just to be there for your child. If your child... Uh, wants to, 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 to go there and talk about stuttering. You know, let, no, you know, let them talk about stuttering. If they if they're in speech therapy, be a like positive a, a reinforcement for them during their speech therapy. Just allow the child to dictate the conversations about, about stuttering and and how they best want to to handle it. For teachers. I guess w- w- work with the parents in terms of what, what what's going on in speech therapy. Also, don't make a big deal out of it. If if the child w- 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 wants to do something in class, you know, let them do that. Don't use the child's stutter as an excuse to to not put them in a school play or to not have them you know read aloud in class. Be conscious of their stutter but allow the child to do to do everything that they want to do and what the other students are doing. Wow, that is great advice. I want to touch back on the teachers. Do you yeah. think it would be a good idea to have like a private conversation with them, you know, giving them a heads up 
like, you know, I'm Pedro and I stutter. So if you call on me, I may have some difficulty. Do, do you think that would be beneficial? Yes. So what my parents would do was during uh, my parent teacher was during parent teacher conferences. Uh, they would tell my teacher, "Hey, uh, James is in, in those stutters. So if you pick, so if you call on him and he blanks out or he's or he's starting the sentence over a bunch of times, uh, it's okay. This is that's that's just him, you know, stuttering. It's gonna be okay. Just you know, ride with it and." And it, it'll, it'll be fine. But also, if you, if you have any if you have any questions, you know, let us know and we can help you. And then in college, I would self-disclose to a couple of teachers if I had to. Uh, I remember disclosing to uh, my public speaking professor before my of my first speech. I went to his office and I just said, "Hey, I stutter." So um, when I'm up there presenting. I'll be blocking. I'll be repeating a bunch of, uh, of of my syllables. I may go over the time limit. I just wanted to let him know what was going on, and he didn't have any any issues with it. How cool! What was very helpful during my school years is there was always a school night. Meet the parents, right. and so I made sure that the teachers that I was in their class that, Hey, I have a severe stutter. You know, uh, th there may be many, many, many days where I, I cannot say my name. So it would be a good idea to not call on me. However, in theory, it was a good idea, but <laughs> as you know, in school, you have to read out loud. And yes. when the, teacher would go down the line student by student when it was almost my turn i would raise my hand and go to the restroom and th that happened extremely often and so many of the teachers had wondered if i had a medical condition because i was always going to the restroom but that was how i coped with it because getting in, in front of people for number one is extremely traumatic. Then they want you to speak and that's even more <laughs> traumatic. Mm -hmm. And so during my school years, I would always skip the first two, two days of school because as you know, you have to give an introduction, yes. you know, in every single class. And so how I figured is, well, if I miss the first two days, you know, I don't, you know, I don't have to handle that. I can bypass that altogether and just go on the third day and just, you know, go on with school. But that was how I would cope with it. it but, but when you went on the third day, did they still make you uh, present yourself and like in, in, introduce yourself oh no oh. they they were just too busy you know carrying on the lesson plan and getting out the schoolwork and the homework so i mean it worked for me perfectly yeah <laughs> yeah good plan it worked for 12 years <laughs> not bad so changing gears job wise had you ever um, experienced discrimination because of your speech Oh, um, I like to think I have not. Um, I've had a bunch of jobs. I've worked in retail. I've worked as a camp counselor. I've worked for the state. I've worked in my current position in the medical field. And I've been at different levels of fluency throughout all those jobs. And I was very, I got, I, I don't know if upfront's the best word, but my supervisors and my bosses knew that I stuttered, whether I told them or they just picked up on it after a while. And for the most part with my jobs, it hasn't been that big of a deal. With my current job, I was very upfront about it. 
and it's been you know no issue. I'm sure there have been you know customers there were customers you know that that would say something probably or think something about me and the way I talked when I worked in retail, but they never made an issue about it to, to my supervisor. But for the most part, no, it, it hasn't been that big of a deal in terms of me getting jobs. You make a very good point um, in that disclosing your stutter, that has helped me out tremendously in with all facets of my life job wise you know going out to restaurants um going out to functions i always disclose because there are a lot of people who don't know what stuttering is right and for me uh disclosing has been something that i've only started to do in the past like year and a half to two years. Uh, before then, I would always say, if you talk me long enough, you can figure out that I stutter. But I do like to disclose within the first few minutes of, of, of meeting people, just so they know they know you know what's going on, and the elephant is no longer in the room. Yes, exactly, exactly. Have you ever experienced depression? because of your stuttering? No, I mean, I've gone through rough points in my 26 years, but none of those have been caused by my stutter. But there were days and there are days when I have a rough day with stuttering and that could, you know, give me like a bad day because I had this, this rough experience with my speech. And I'm going to, 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 to let that get to me, although I know I shouldn't let it get to me. It, it, it will get to me for, for a like day or so. But generally, no. Like, I, I haven't had any depressive episodes as a result of my stuttering. You had touched on it briefly. How do you handle having a bad day, stuttering-wise? How do you handle that? Ooh. So it's, it's changed a lot. It would used to be I would be mad and upset at myself and I would take it out on other people and it wasn't good or 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 healthy. And uh in probably the past like year or so, I've gotten better at realizing, okay, I stutter, it's a bad day, it's gonna be okay. There's t- 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 tomorrow. And I'll just write about it. If I'm having a, a like rough day, I'll just e- either write like a quick article about it, or a poem, or whatever the case may be. But I think the thing that's gone through helped me the most was this piece of advice I received from a friend uh, around Christmas time all, 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 all last year, which is to uh, 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 forgive your hard days. And for me, that means, like, yes, I stutter, and yes, it's going to suck, and yes, there are going to be days when it's going to be t- – when it, it's bad and it's terrible. But for me, I need to, to, to forgive those days, forgive those moments, and to see the good and the beauty that stuttering has <sighs> brought – you know, to me over the past uh, 20 some odd years. Wow. That's a great point to just forgive yourself Mm -hmm. because I know a lot of people who stutter, you know, after having a bad day, they just beat themselves up, uh, you know, verbally, they have those negative thoughts that pop in your head. And so I love how, how you, have that handled, you just forgive yourself and just move on to the next day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to to beat myself up a lot over, 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 over over stuttering, especially in like public speaking situations when there were many times I would 
practice a presentation, whether it was for school or whether I was going to read at mass. And I would practice within the confines of my speech therapy room and I would be fluent or I would, would, would barely stutter. And then the day of, I would stutter on nearly every syllable of every word. And I would like leave mad at myself. I would leave mad at stuttering. And I would let it get to me for the entire day because I thought like I did it perfectly in speech therapy. Why couldn't I do it you know, perfectly here? I know I can do it. And it just led to a lot of self-beating and it wasn't good or, or healthy for me. That's a very good point that, that you make. I've spoken to many people who stutter and many of them had, have told me how they handle it, how they cope with it. They self-medicate um, either with alcohol or cannabis. Have you ever tried that? No, I, I, I don't touch drugs at all. Um, and then I do drink, but only uh, uh, socially. But I do find that if I have one or two drinks, I tend to stutter a lot more than I usually do. But if I've had more than a few drinks, I tend to be fluent. Yes, I completely agree because after <laughs> After I've had a couple of rum and cokes, let me tell you, Pedro's got perfect speech. <laughs> I'm the same way. <laughs> Love me some rum and coke. Sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most effective technique that you do for fluency? So for the most part, I tend to stutter on, but... If I'm in a situation where I'm just having a bad day with my speech, or I know that in order for the next thing to happen, I need to to, to say what I need to say, uh, my usual go-to is easy onset. Let me ask you a very extremely popular question. Go for it. Do you let others finish your sentences for you uh so the short answer is no uh i i this is one of my i guess biggest up up uh, uh pet peeves is when people try to finish my sentences and for me when when you try to finish my sentence you're telling me that my voice is not worth being heard and that aggravates me to no end um, so when someone does fin when, when they do finish uh, 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 my sentence, I'll, I'll also continue uh, 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 my sentence because it shows that person that you know, my voice matters. Even if you know what I'm going to say, still let me uh, 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 let me say it. And they also sh uh, and but then there are also times when the person finishes my sentence and they're wrong. And then the, 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 they look stupid. And, and in addition to telling me that my voice is not worth being heard. But as there's sometimes when I will call people out on it, and there's other times when I won't, if it's someone that I will be you know, working with, whether it's a coworker or whether I'm in a group project or whatever the, the case may be, if I know I will be with this person for a long period of time, I'll just say, "Hey, um, I know you mean well, but don't finish, but but don't finish all, 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 all my sentences. If it's someone who I'll never see again, like the cashier at Walmart or you know the the delivery guy, I won't say anything because this may be their first time encountering someone who stutters, and they may not know any better." And then there's just some days when I just don't want to, you know, you know, have that conversation or like, or like have that, that fight with that person. That's very, very um, interesting because everyone that I've spoken to, it's just split 50, 50, right down the middle. Before I turned 40, my speech was just, I mean, it, it was it was just horrible. And so I would 
have people help me out, finish my thoughts. And like you, half of the time, they were incorrect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the other half, they were spot on. But, but after, after I, after I turned 40, that was when I told myself, okay, I'm done. I'm tired. I am ex I am ex I am exhausted mentally, physically, psychologically. I mean, stuttering is it does drain you. However, after after I turn 40, um, I told myself, okay, I stutter. I I will welcome my stutter. I will embrace my stutter. And so I will no longer fight it. So after I turned 40, I no longer have people finish my thoughts because I will do it, you know, and, and granted, it may take me a little bit longer. I may have a longer block. I may turn red. I may pass out, but I'm going to finish <laughs> what I'm going to say. <laughs> exactly. Because our voice is worth being heard a damage whether it takes us in, 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 you know 10 extra seconds to get it out or, or like 10 extra minutes yes 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 exactly so here is a very this is an intriguing question because it's also split down the middle so when you are alone can you speak without stuttering uh, if I'm talking out loud or thinking stuff, if, if I'm talking out loud or thinking out loud, yes. Yeah, I can. Yeah. But this is, but this instance is kind of weird because technically I'm by myself right now and I'm still stuttering. Although I'm, I'm talking to you, but I'm <laughs> in a room by myself. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so it's like, so like in this instance, no, because, you know, clearly I'm stuttering big time. <clears throat> But if I am thinking something out or like, or talking out loud, for the most part, I'm pretty fluent. That's interesting because when I'm alone, I stutter. When I'm in the shower, I stutter. When I'm in the kitchen, I stutter. So, I, yeah. so it doesn't really matter where I am. If I'm alone, <laughs> I'm still going to stutter. So <laughs> very interesting. So have has this ever happened to you? Let's say you have a doctor's appointment and you get there to the office and there's a, fr a front desk and they greet you. Good morning. What is your name? How may I help you? Then you have a block and it's a very long block. And then they respond, did you forget your name? Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> so fortunately, I've never had this situation. I've had people who will look at me weird or they'll kind of like see like, they'll ask like, are you okay? But I've never had someone ask me, did you forget your name? I mean, but I've had it, ha have had instances where people will laugh at me. And in, and in those cases, I just ask them, you know, you know what's so funny because like i know what they're doing but i'm giving them the out to say oh i was laughing at like this joke that my friend told me the other day and it's just you know bad timing <laughs> but but you know i've been fortunate and lucky enough that i've never experienced that type of situation where i was on a block and someone asked me did you forget your name well, it's happened to me so many times. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even count. I just wish I had a dollar for every time I would be driving home in a Lexus. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. So let's switch gears job wise. If you are a person who stutters, job interviews are stressful. They are very traumatic for a, for a, for a lot of people in general, but but if you stutter, it's like ten times more stressful. How did you handle job interviews? 
And so they've been handled differently uh, at every job that I've had, simply because I've been at different points in my journey with stuttering. Uh, the first job I ever had, I was 14 years old and there was no real interview. Uh, my uncle uh, uh, knew the manager and my cousins worked there. So I just kind of had, I, I was just there. They told me to show up and work and for, for training. And then my, my second job as a camp counselor, I never addressed the fact that I stutter, but the uh, 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 the camp director was someone that I knew previously. So before the interview started, I re- he, 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 he told uh, the panel that I stuttered. And I don't remember if it was addressed or not in my interview. I, I It's been six years since that, so I'm not 100% sure. And then the job I had before the one I'm currently at, um, I was an intern there the, the summer before. So they already knew that I stuttered and it wasn't brought up in, in, in my job interview. And then for the job that I'm currently at, it was on uh, 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 my resume that I wrote a book called the Dear Old I Stutter. So they knew going into it that I was a person that, that stutters. And it may have come up in the interview, but I'm not 100% sure. What I found most helpful um, as a tool, as a technique, is that for every job interview, I disclosed. This was my st- statement walking in. Okay, we've, we have already shook hands and did the greetings. And then I take my seat and then I start. I'm Pedro Pena. I have a speech impediment. I battle with stuttering every day, but I win that battle mm-hmm. every single day. Yeah. And I think for me, if I were to walk into a new job, if if I were to, to walk in for an interview for a, a new job tomorrow or whatever, I would be upfront and disclosed with after we, we, we did the pleasantries and whatnot, I would probably, probably say something along the lines of, I do stutter, so I may block or I may lose eye contact with you or I may repeat some syllables, but this is just a part of who I am. If you want to ask me any questions about it afterwards, I'm more than happy to, 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 to respond to them and then say, okay, now let's get on to the interview. or you know, something to that effect. That's a good point to make. Now, talking about your career, did you let stuttering dictate your uh, career path? So in a weird way, stuttering has like led me to a side career. But for my, my main career, no, stuttering... Uh, didn't uh, 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 dictate what I wanted to do. I just, like, in, in college, I knew in, 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 my, in my major, and I knew this is what I wanted to do, and I did it. And I figured whatever public speaking uh, opportunities uh, uh, arise during that job, uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge in, in when we get there. And then for, for my current job, I, is, uh, 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 my stutter really hasn't ha- like, impacted my ability to do the job. Like I am on the phone, you, you know, sometimes talking to other people in the hospital and I do stutter, but it hasn't had a negative impact on my day-to-day job. But in terms of like, I guess my side career or, side hustle, whatever you want to call it, uh, stuttering has impacted it, but in a positive way. So I write about my stutter and it's opened up a lot of uh, doors for me. And I, I like to think if I did not stutter, I would not be writing and I would not have had some of the opportunities that I've had. So in a way, stuttering, it, it, it like... <sighs> has impacted 
of my job a situation. Yes, many people talk about their stutter is a curse or their stutter is a blessing. But in both of our cases, um, it's been a blessing. Yeah, yeah, it has been. It took me a long time to see that, but yeah, it's been a good thing. Me too. <laughs> I think we're twins. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so here, here is a hot topic. I mean, this is a highly talked about topic in our stuttering community. So here we go. How was dating? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Uh, dating. Okay, so I am naturally an introvert. So even if I didn't stutter, dating would be difficult for me. Simply because like, I am terrible at small talk. I don't like it. All of the places where people like tend to meet, like at bars or clubs, parties, whatever, um, are not my thing. I do not like being there. So even if I didn't stutter, I think it would dating would be difficult for me. Uh, so dating and stuttering, uh, yeah. So in college, there was there was this girl. And long story short, she was the first girl to see past the fact that I stuttered, which was a big deal for me. Uh, it didn't work out the way I thought it would work out. And it taught me a lot. And it, it, it was good. It took me a while to see that. But, but now, like, in post-grad, even though I'm more okay with my stutter and accepting my stutter and comfortable with my stutter, if we're being honest... I think I do let it hold me back in a way because I, I can be okay and comfortable in accepting the fact that I stutter. But what if I approach th this girl and she, she has an issue with the fact that I stutter or she makes a stupid comment? Like, yes, that tells me that's, that's not a person that I want to be with, but it would also put me in a really bad spot for that day or for that week. And it's something that, like, do I want to risk regressing in acceptance of my stutter? It, it's 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 weird for me. It's one of those things that I'm still working on because there's always going to be that small voice in the back of my mind of saying, "Well, what if she makes a comment, or what if she, she can't see the past the fact that you stutter, or what if what if what if?" And they're all, you know, negative what ifs. Right. Now, here's my what if. So hold on. <laughs> what if there was a dating app for stutterers? Because this popped in my head last night. What if there was a dating app for stutterers? Would you use it? Yes. Yeah. Because then that, I guess, elephant is is no longer in the room and you have that thing that you can instantly bond over and you have someone that like truly gets it because people that, that don't stutter, they can empathize with it, but they can never truly get it. And back to like apps and online dating. So like I do online date and I do, and like in like my bio, I, I do mention James is whatever, whatever, whatever. And a person that stutters. So you, you do know what you're, getting, what you're getting yourself into, but nothing's really in, in, in the worked out on, on, on that front. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Talking about technology, do, do you think it's helpful or do, do you think it is like a crutch? For example, Google Home, uh, Alexa, and Siri um and 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 whatnot do you, you think it's helpful for p people who stutter or do you or do you think it's you know another f form of having a crutch so i don't have alexa i don't use it um and like siri and all those other things i used to be very very against it i never used it because the few times i did i would try using you know siri and I would stutter on it and it would tell me something that I, I didn't want. So I, I got aggravated with it and, and, and like never used it because it was just another way to remind me that I stuttered. 
and that was kind of my, my, my mindset of, of, of steering all that in college and early post-grad. But then we were talking about the, uh, uh, this topic in one of, of my NSA meetings and, and like one of and like one of the members, you know, challenged me to use a, a, a Siri for just for different stuff, whether it was to ask directions or or like how many, uh, you know, pounds on a kilogram or whatever. And I did use it a little bit, and I got better results. And I do tend to use Siri every once in a while, mainly when I'm in traffic and I'm trying to find a, a different route. I, I use it, but day to day, I, I don't use those products. I don't think it's a crutch. I think it's another means to, to help with whatever, but it's just not a product I use on a regular basis. See, we are... we we are in this same boat because I tried it and I have a hard time with my S's, which, mm -hmm. you know, everyone knows. And then G's and then A's <laughs> I can spend all day just focusing <laughs> on that one letter. And, you know, I'm after a, a certain time period, I'm just tired, and so I just won't do it. So I don't, <laughs> I don't do any voice technology right now. However, down the road that may change, but but for right now, I just don't use it. Yeah, because there was a time when I had to call my mom for something as I was driving to tell her I was going to be late for for, for whatever. And I, and I said, you know, Siri, a call mom, but I got stuck on call. So I think it interpreted it as like, as like kickball and took me to like <laughs> a kickball stadium or whatever. I'm just like, no, this is no. So I, I think I, I like pulled over or something and then called my mom. And then, <laughs> like, you know, went on with it with my day. Right. Like, Wrong answer, Siri. No. Nope. Try again. <laughs> try again. Try again. So what has st st what has stuttering taught you? Stuttering has taught me a lot. Stuttering, and I think ultimately accepting my stutter. It's taught me to see people for you know who they are, not how I want them to be. It's taught me to be more empathetic. It's taught me to, to, to meet people, you know, you know where they are. It's taught me to be a better listener. It's uh, retaught me uh, the beauty of celebrating uh, the small victories in life. It's taught me about finding the good in the bad. And it's ultimately given me more self-confidence by accepting the fact that I stutter. It's made me a more confident person. And I like to think I'm a better person because I've, I've made the choice day in and day out and at times hour by hour to accept my stutter. Wow. How cool. I love that. I love that. Cause my answer is your answer mm -hmm. verbatim. So awesome. Awesome. So what advice would you give to another person who stutters? What age group? Okay, let's start off grade school. Okay, so to my younger self, because this was one of the first pieces that I've ever I, I ever wrote was letter to, was a letter to, to, to my younger self, and uh, the closing piece of advice was uh, just remember one thing: you always wore always are and always will be so much more than your stutter. I know you may not see that now, but in time you will. I think that's my biggest piece to wow. you know the the the, the nine-year-old that stutters and it's just and is and it's like you know trying to figure out am I the only person in the world that stutters? Are there other people like me? Will this prevent me 
from, from doing stuff? And the answer is you're not alone and it won't prevent you. And then for others, I guess adults, teenagers, whatever, it's realized that you're not alone in this. Um, there are days when stuttering sucks, but it can teach you a lot if you're willing to see it. Uh, also, you know, seek out the support that you need, whether that's speech therapy, whether that's a support group, whether that's just, you know, you know, writing about it, do whatever you need to do to, to get you through it. And it's going to be okay. And stuttering is not the worst thing in the world, but it's just one of the many things that make you uniquely you. Wow. How, how profound, how awesome, awesome, awesome. I would like to thank you for sharing your story because I believe there's healing in sharing. Yes. You are hashtag courageous, hashtag awesome, Mr. Hayden, and a huge inspiration to all. And then also, this will not be our last conversation because I have many, many, many more topics that I, <laughs> that I would like to pick your brain on. So I'm all for it. Awesome. Let's say someone wants to reach out to you. How can they find you? So you can uh, find me on Twitter at James Hayden of 48. I tweet about uh, Saints games, Survivor, This Is Us, and any links to any articles that I've written. Um, I have a Facebook, but I like to keep that private. Um, you can also check out my work on my personal blog, which is a, a stuttered blog, S-T-U-T-T-E-R-E-D blog at wordpress.com. Uh, you can also check out uh, 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 my writings on the, the Mighty and on the Stuttering Foundation's website. How cool. And you are an author. Can you talk about your book? Yes. So I wrote my book. It's called A, A, A Dear World, I Stutter available on Amazon, Kindle, and BarnesNobles.com. Uh, I published it two years, almost two years ago at this point, and it is a series of 25 open letters to people that have been or will be on, on my journey with stuttering. So in it, it's uh, to my 10-year-old self, to my parents, to my sister, to uh, my family, to, to my speech therapist, to my friends, to my coworkers, uh, to uh, 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 to future speech therapist, to my stutter, to the, the waiter that laughed at my stutter, to the first girl to see past my stutter, uh, to my future self, my future wife, my future kids, uh, to the person they said that they felt sorry for me because I stutter, to the person who said I should never apologize for the fact that I stutter, and there's there's more, but I'm forgetting them at the moment. But yeah, check it out. It's a good stuff. Wow, you better believe that will be on my list. And so I encourage everybody, all of my podcast listeners, go out and get this book, Dear World, I Stutter. There will be links in the sh 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 show notes because I would like to 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 talk about that book at uh, at a later podcast, if that's all, all right with you. I'm all for it. Let me know when. Great. Well, James Hayden, I want to thank you for your time. You are a true inspiration to all people who stutter. You are just awesome. And so I want to thank you for spending time with me. Thank you for having me, Pedro. I appreciate it. It was fun. Thank, thank you, sir. And you have an awesome day. You too. There you have it. If you like this podcast, head on over to Apple iTunes, subscribe, rate, and review. You can follow me on all of my social media with my stuttering life. Thank you for listening, and we will talk again. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. 
Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.